In this diagram, we will draw an overview of the anatomy of the nervous system. First, we will address the brain, brainstem, and cerebellum. Begin with a coronal section through the brain. From outside to inside, label the meninges, which protect and nourish the nervous system, the cortex, which is the outer cellular gray matter brain area, the subcortical white matter, which carries impulses throughout the brain, the basal ganglia, which are most notably involved in motor function, but are also important for behavioral and cognitive functions, the thalamus, which in combination with the metathalamus, relays most of the afferent information that enters the brain, the hypothalamus, which lies along the third ventricle and serves as the center for autonomic nervous system function, and the cerebrospinal fluid system, which assists the meninges in supporting and nourishing the nervous system. Below the brain, draw the brain stem. From superior to inferior, draw the midbrain, identified by its crew cerebri, then the pons, identified by its bulbous basal outpouching, and finally the medulla. The brainstem contains cranial nerve nuclei, which command oculobulbar motility and facial sensation, and reside over many autonomic functions. It also contains many additional neuronal pools essential for survival, as well as the fiber tracts that pass between the brain and spinal cord. On the posterior aspect of the brainstem, draw the leafy hemispheres of the cerebellum. The cerebellum is important for balance and orientation, postural stability, and coordination. Next, we will address the spinal cord and peripheral nervous system. Draw the long, thin spinal cord with its cervical and lumbosacral enlargements. Label the segments of the spinal cord from top to bottom as cervical, thoracic, lumbosacral, and coccygeal. The cervical segment mostly communicates with the upper extremities, upper trunk, head, and neck. The thoracic segment mostly communicates with the trunk and abdomen. And the lumbosacral segment communicates with the abdominal pelvic region and the lower extremities. Draw a dorsal nerve root off of the posterior spinal cord. Identify it with its dorsal root ganglion, which houses the sensory cell bodies. Then draw the ventral root from the anterior surface of the spinal cord. It contains the motor fibers that exit from the gray matter of the spinal cord. Next, show that the motor and sensory roots meet to form a mixed spinal nerve within a neural foramen. Then show that the cervical nerves interweave to form the cervical and brachial plexuses. Now indicate that the lower lumbosacral nerve roots descend through the lumbar cistern and then exit the spinal canal to form the lumbosacral plexus. Next indicate that the majority of the thoracic nerves remain unmixed. Then show that after the nerves exit their plexuses, they continue as peripheral nerve fibers. Now draw a representative neuromuscle junction and a sensory cell receptor and attach muscle fibers to them. Neurotransmissions pass across the neuromuscle junctions to stimulate muscle fibers, and peripheral nerve receptors detect sensory impulses from the musculoskeletal system and skin. Lastly, to represent the divisions of the autonomic nervous system, draw a parasympathetic ganglion and a sympathetic paravertebral chain segment. The parasympathetic nervous system is active in states of rest, whereas the sympathetic nervous system is active in states of heightened awareness, it produces the fight-or-flight response. This concludes our diagram.